Hey guys, Zen here, and welcome back. Today we're getting into the latest for Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm ready for these updates, and so, yeah, let's do this. This video is made possible with the Ridge Wallet. Ridge is changing the game in a big way when it comes to your personal wallet, because they developed one that's much slimmer and much more secure than your standard run-of-the-mill wallet. It's unique, and around the same size as a credit card, and if you're still carrying cash, they offer it with the money clip, like I have here, or the cash strap, so you can still carry all the usual essentials. So, guys, down below, there's a link that'll get you 10% off your purchase of a Ridge wallet when you use code ZEN at checkout. Over on Ridge.com, they offer up a bunch of different colors and styles. They'll ship it to you worldwide and you'll get a nice discount when you apply code ZEN. I've been enjoying my Ridge for nearly a year at this point and so far so good. But if anything happens, they guarantee it for life. And so head below to check it out and thank you to Ridge for the continued support. So to begin, we're gonna start with the latest patch to Rainbow Six Siege. Ubisoft and the devs have detailed the Year 5 Season 3.2 update for the game and there's some interesting changes. For starters, you'll now be able to see if you were pinged with a yellow ping during the replay after you die. So this is somewhat of a difficult situation to navigate because there are some in the community who feel as though being able to send through a yellow ping, like especially on a drone and target an enemy who's unaware, gives an unfair advantage. Now, it seems like the devs actually do want this in the game and as a part of the meta because it isn't something that's been changed really at all. All this update does is let you know if you were pinged at all and if you were surprised how an enemy knew where you were without actually tagging you, or if you were wall banged and never saw it coming, you'll now get that feedback in the kill cam, and so it'll add a little bit of clarity. Beyond that, this update is mainly about fixing the game. The reload animations of both the Spaz 12 and the Bearing 9 have been fixed, and Chalet has seen a few adjustments that polish it up. The updates recently have been fairly light, but I thought you guys would like to know what those extra gigs were about. So next up, I wanted to get into a few stats thanks to R6 Analyst over on Twitter. So one of the biggest features of Shadow Legacy has been the map bands, and it's a way to add another level of tactics against the opponent. Now, over on R6 Analyst, they followed over 30,000 ranked matches and recorded the ban rates of the maps in the playlist, and the results are quite fascinating. So, overall, Outback is the top banned map and has a 97% ban rate, which basically means that if it comes up in the rotation, it's banned nearly every single match. Now, personally, Outback is one of my least favorite maps, and it's mainly to do with how condensed the map feels. As an attacker, it's really really difficult to avoid the roamers, and with how many small rooms and nooks that they can be hiding out, you end up wasting a ton of time simply room clearing. As a defender, the problems only really kick in if the attackers take control of the objective. It's one of the most challenging maps to retake as a defender, and so it's just a map that I think causes a lot of frustration. But it's out, right? Like 97% basically signals that the majority of players agree that they just don't want to take part of a match on Outback, and so it's banned all the time. The following three are Theme Park, Chalet and Bank, and I get it for the most part with Theme Park. I mean, I enjoy playing on it, but I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and Bank is a map that I personally feel needs to be touched up, because for me, it just doesn't work anymore. But Chalet is really concerning, because it's the latest rework here for Rainbow Six Siege, and with it having one of the highest ban rates so far, even if the pool is quite small, it's basically saying that players aren't even giving it a chance. Now, for my ranked sessions, I've not played one game on the rework to Chalet. Alright, maybe one game, but definitely not too, and so I just haven't had the opportunity to really get settled in and adjust to the changes. Now, when rank is on the line, most players want to minimize as much risk as possible and join every match with as much comfortability as they can, because let's be honest, grinding ranked is no easy task. And so when a brand new map that you've never really played on pops up in the playlist, that risk goes up because you're just not familiar with it, and so instead it gets banned. But how exactly can you counter this? If you ban it, you never take the time out to learn it, and you don't really get the opportunity to get familiar with the map, and so you never get comfortable, and you guys get it. The cycle continues. Now, for me, I feel like at this point, I'm only playing a handful of maps. Cafe is always there, Oregon and Coastline are typically played, and every now and again, I'll have a match on Consulate or Border. So, out of 12 maps, I see roughly half of that in my experience, and that ratio is a little scary. Now, I'm a veteran player, as are many of you, and we've been able to enjoy these maps throughout the years and get acquainted with them. But a player that's new with this season and is jumping into those early ranked sessions only has casual to thank for experience, which has a bunch more maps, and so the time they get on each of them is honestly limited. I don't know. This is something I think definitely needs to be looked at, because it's not totally fair to constantly ban a map, mainly because it's a new map and unfamiliar. So, I'm not exactly sure how you guys feel about the Chalet rework, but I personally feel like they've done a really solid job with it. The sites are a little more open and offer up multiple routes in and out of them. The attackers actually have the 
ability to be on the roof to kind of plot out a better strategy and the map just overall flows better and so i like it again it should be noted that these stats aren't official from ubisoft but i think they paint a fairly accurate picture of what's going on with ranked right now and it's a little eye-opening so yeah Next up, guys, there's a brand new trailer that shows off some of the coolest skins available at the moment. And if you grab one, you'll support one of Rainbow Six Siege's finest. Roll the film. So guys, the R6 share program is a way for you to buy a customization item in the shop and support your favorite org. Depending on which operator you choose and the stuff that comes with it, Ubisoft will essentially share that revenue with the org and, you know, keep the lights on. Now, we get a little bit more detail about what this is all about. Just hear this. Earlier this month, we were proud to reveal more details about R6 share, the cornerstone of our vision of sustainable esports for Rainbow Six Siege, aiming to ensure a mature and virtuous environment for partner organizations. R6 share will support 42 organizations worldwide and introduce a multi-tier support system with three tiers to adapt both revenue shares and requirements to the organization's variable situations. So if you buy a Teams Ella bundle or Thermite gear, for instance, they'll be given 30% of that revenue, which helps sustain the cost of operating the org. And also 30% of the rev share goes towards the players and content creators. So really everyone that makes up R6 Esports from the orgs to the players has the ability to benefit here. I think this kind of support is really important for the health of the community as a whole and here's hoping they introduce some kind of supporter creator system in the shop where you can of course support your favorite creators by purchasing items in the shop with their code and hey just putting it out there now use code zen and so last up here guys i wanted to revisit r6 on the next generation because now that all the dust has settled there's just a few things that i think everyone should know now if you do plan on upgrading to the next generation of consoles so that's the playstation 5 xbox series x or series s rainbow Six Siege will be made available on those platforms. On top of that, Siege will be available at no extra cost, and the devs have confirmed that all you'll need to do is place your existing disc into the new console, and it'll be like nothing changed. Now, of course, on the PS5 Digital Edition or Series S consoles, there is no disc drive, and so if you go for one of those, you'll have to download a digital version of the game. But if you already own a digital copy, you'll be able to transfer your account over seemingly without issue. Now, for next-gen systems, Siege is confirmed to be getting an entirely free update that will open up 4k resolution with up to 120 frames per second gameplay but i think it's important to note that if you opt for a series s you might not reach that requirement because microsoft have come out and said that the target for series s is 1440p and so there could be some differences there and so that's essentially everything to know about rainbow six siege on the next generation of consoles and i think if you're someone who's taking the leap this year and upgrading the added benefits to siege will definitely be appreciated so that's it guys and we'll do it for the video if you guys did enjoy this one be sure to drop a like like and subscribe with post notifications to be here for my next video. With that, it's been Zen. Hey. I'm out.